Okay, second half of the lecture is more on uh, communication with uh, mat material scientists. Okay. Uh, I won't ask you in this semester. But it's good you know. Uh, it's good you know. Uh, because the way they label the location, how they see atom inside the crystal structure, uh, it will help you in uh, not not in material but in other, um, for example, finite element and so on. Right. So use the same concept. For example, Cartesian plane. You know, huh? So Cartesian plane. You have x, y, z. There must be a center of coordinate system. So for material, you go up is z axis, vertical one, the x axis. Then the plane one, the, the x and y. Y will be to the right will be positive y. And going outside this screen will be positive. Okay. So they will be positive and negative direction. Okay. All these numbers are coordinate like you are very familiar in your mathematics. Right? So the first number you use bracket, you have three number. First is X coordinate, second one is Y coordinate, the last one will be Z coordinate. For example, I pick this this point. This point is on the X axis. Is one unit from the center, so I put one. And the y is at y uh, at y location zero, so you get zero. Z also at z location zero z, so you get zero. It's like a coordinate in a normal Cartesian plane. Then this one going down zero x zero y zero and z go down minus one. This is a normal coordinate system that you're very familiar in a three-dimensional space. All right. <clears throat> Next is about plane. Just now it's dot, right? The exact location of that point, and always it referring to one reference uh, origin. Okay. Next is on 2D when you talk about phases. Especially when it comes to uh, how you chop uh, the crystal structure, how you cut the crystal structure. Right? Now, it, it will be like uh, you're looking at a single piece of A4 paper. For example, if you look at okay, this, uh, the bracket one. There are, there are a few symbols. Huh? Bracket. This is location. X, Y, Z. From center, right? For this bracket one. This is BCC. Huh? BCC, uh, body centered. Body centered means there's one centered molecule at the center. So you have how many molecule inside? Uh, how many uh, how many dot that you have for a crystal structure? You have uh, nine dot. You have nine dot, but you have uh, two complete sphere. Okay, you have nine dot, but two complete sphere. So this dot we can say as a uh, atom at that particular location. All right. So. If you want to mention this, this uh, particles or at the center of the cube, then you bracket half, half, half. Right? How you know it's half? X move half, Y move half, Z move half. So you get half, half, half. From where? It must from one origin, which is zero, zero, zero. Usually we are picking the back last atom at the back this one you have a cube huh? so you always pick one corner at the lowest point at the back okay
Next direction. Uh, or we, we, you learn this one in vector, mathematic vector. For example, this blue line is a long x axis, right? So your vector, you use bracket to represent direction. To represent direction, same, you have x, y, and z. This is how many unit that it move inside the cube from origin. For example, this R vector, it move in X direction only, do not move in Y, do not move in Z. So you write one, zero, zero. Same with this one. To reach from here to here, it must move X one, Y one, Z zero. To get this one, and then the rest is the same. And notation for negative or reverse. You see there's a negative on top of the numbers. Negative. When you write negative for uh, direction, you write at the top. But if you write about position, this one is all positive. But position, it can be negative. Huh? It can be at the back of the reference. Okay, it can be negative here. But you put in the front. So there are two symbols. One is location, one is vector or direction. The third one is called, uh, okay, the rest you read. Lah, huh? uh, Vector, they are named as uh, indexes or index. This one. Index means the, the, the arrow, where the arrow will end, from the origin to end point. This, this whole thing called this one, index or indexes. Okay. From the screen here, you see two types of Symbol, bracket, and uh, uh, what do you call? It's called what? Uh, there are two types of uh, this one. Uh. Okay, the rest you read. They are all information, but same, still telling the same story about two different things. Uh. Okay, the next one. There is uh, when you deal with all these things, you need to recall the dot products from your mathematics. You see, remember when you vector A dot vector B, you use magnitude of A times magnitude of B cos theta, and then or this form or this form, right? You are given A, sorry, A vector, you have x, y, z, B, you have uh, x, y, z. So when you do the same calculation, there are two ways of doing it. When you have dot product, means you take this one, multiply by this one, you get the first one. Take this one, multiply by this one, you get second one. This one, multiply this one, you get the third one. You get the first term. Cost theta is take a uh, vector, Divided by magnitude. Direction of vector, you take direction divided by magnitude. Yeah, go very fast, huh? You can put all the same family. If you have one unit, one unit in X, one unit in Y, one unit in Z, and this one is bracket. Huh? Bracket means direction. Whether it's negative magnitude, you can form in one family, is called one zero zero family. Okay, you use family. Y.
Okay, this example three, your homework, lah. Go and read now. Okay. Once you, you once you you know what the statement it means, it asks you to to write from this point to this point. What is the sorry? What is the this one? Uh, direction of indexes. Okay, you read lah. Go very fast. This slides. Example four, same. You are given two dots. Direction is from this point to this point. You calculate the vector. Okay. Next one is called plane. Plane. We use a uh, scientist name Mueller. Mueller notation system, where we use plane. Huh? So there are a few steps to do it. Again, I go very fast, right? So we will have all these steps. Uh. Step one, do what? Step two, do what? Step three, do what? Step four, do what? And you, at the end, you give one notation, a Miller notation, right? Give you an example. Now, for example, plane. This plane is like how you move the paper. This one, how do you move from the origin zero, zero, zero? So this location is you shift the paper front, right? So you have X move one unit, X do not move, Y do not move. So the whole plane move one unit to the X. This is the X plane. Okay, one unit X plane. Same with this one. We use this plane to do, uh, to calculate the A and R just now for BCC. That's a, uh, for BCC. FCC, we use this one. We use the side one. All right, this one is one, one, one. Means you move X and Y one unit. You mark X and then you mark Y. You combine X, Y, it become one plane. All right, so it's like move X, then move Y. So it become slanted like that. Then this one, if you put one, 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 it become 45 degree angle. Okay, so this is called uh, Miller indexes for plane. If you put this one, although the bracket, but you, if you give a name to it, it become plane. Okay, Miller indexes or Miller numbers. It become a plain numbers. Okay, this is a plain numbers. Okay, the rest you read, huh? You read. Okay, this is another explanation on the numbers. Lah. You just shift a little bit and then you explain what happened if you move and then what happened to the numbers. Okay. So I'll move very fast. Okay. So um, some textbook they use this analysis. With, they use zero or uh, zero zero one plane. What does it mean? Zero zero one plane means they move from the base one unit up to the Z. This one. Then this one zero zero zero. Uh, this one equivalent planes also same. Huh? Zero zero one and so on. This one, okay, this one you also read from the tutorial. Means you slice the plane and then you count how many numbers you have. For example, this one I skip. Okay, example five, I skip. Okay, 4.6, uh, 3.6. 3.6 uh, 3.6 important is the D HKL. What do you mean by HKL? Uh, HKL is the constant at the plane. Huh? This one also I skip. Huh? 
there is a calculation to calculate the number of DHKL. This one already have a one table to help you to find it. So you don't need to memorize. Okay. So they have a different type of uh, A means the lattice constant that we uh, derive for BCC, FCC, and uh, HCP. And this is the Miller indexes for the consideration. Okay, example six also you read is the same application. Example seven you read. Okay, example seven there is a there is a revision. Uh, there's a revision to. To calculate, uh, to calculate the if you're given two points, if you're given two points in three dimensional, you able to find the line. You develop the line for the three D this line, the equation for this line. If you're not sure, go and click this video and watch it. Okay, it will show you like okay, give you two points and then how to calculate it. I'll skip the video. Okay. So the calculation is quite simple, as you can see from this calculation. DHKL, so the question asks you given a copper FCC structure, a unit cell with a lattice constant 0 0.36 nanometer. Lattice constant is your A. What is the interplanar spacing D220? What is 220? The first digit is H, second digit is K, the third digit is L. You use this calculation, DHKL equal to A divided by square root HKL square square square. You just substitute the number. A is 0 0.361, D is 2, uh, H is 2, K is 2, L is 0. So the lattice, uh, the interplanar spacing is 0 0.128. Okay. So you can see the calculation is quite direct. So I won't ask you this formula. It is too simple already. Yeah, I give you this one, you can do already. So uh, nothing much can prove that you actually understand. Okay. So the rest you read, this one also about HCP. Go very fast on this. Okay, um, when you read other textbooks about HCP, uh, or you later maybe you do your FIP about material, then so co coincident it come to HCP material. So HCP, the coordinate system, is start from the base, where it draw the axis, this one is Z. From the base, it break into three axes. Base, you have six corner, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. You pick one corner. Let's say this corner. You jump two, one, two. You become another axis. You jump another two. This, then you get the third axis. So at the bottom, you have axis A one, A two, and A three, and then Z coordinate. So we are given. HKIL indexes. All right. So there's also some calculation for this one. All right. Uh, so for this module, because you have so many things we can ask you, so uh, this one is for your information only. Okay. Okay. So these are the steps to calculate. So uh, step uh, skip lah. Huh? It's too much information for you guys already, so I will skip this one. Ah, this one is part of your assessment. What is important? We come to volume density. Volume density, as you can see, volume density, density is mass divided by volume, right? Mass divided by volume. So volume density of a metal is given by mass per unit cell divided by volume per unit cell. Okay, now you know how to calculate volume already. 
you at least you know how to calculate the BCC, FCC. Right, you know these two. These two are very popular. So you know how to calculate the relationship between A and R for the volume. How do you calculate mass? How do you calculate mass? How do you calculate mass? Inside the cube, you can calculate number of atom, right? A number of sphere. Either for BCC or FCC. How do you calculate mass? You are given in a periodic table, right? Okay. So let's see, yeah. So for example, density of a copper is 8.9 something megagram over meter cube or in gram per cm cube. Theoretical, you get 8.9, but experimental, you get 8.96, which is a bit bigger compared to theoretical one. These are the reasons making the theoretical where it is you calculate and the one you measure in the experiment. These are the factors. Either there is a defect, there's one chapter we'll talk about defect, means there's a hole or there's an additional atom. Mismatch of grain meets. So when we talk about defect later, one of it is grain, means is the, there's a, a, like an earthquake canyon, right? There's a river open up or human error. Or maybe there's a limitation of the machine and so on. Okay, this is the formula used to calculate the volume density of the of and metals. Give you by this is one over volume, right? So on the bottom is this one, one over VC. How to calculate mass? You take number of atoms. These are all the things, huh? So n is number of atoms in each cell. For example. BCC, how many? BCC, how many? Two. FCC, four. So it depends. Huh? So if uh, BCC, then number N is two. Atomic weight, you can calculate, uh, you can see, refer from periodic table. Avogadro, Avogadro number, uh, is it correct? No one, right? Uh, okay. A vocal number uh, is wrong on my slides. It's six point something, 10 power 23. So it's wrong, huh? it's not 16. So volume, you know how to calculate already. So again, memorize this one. Huh? Memorize this, this one. Okay. So in, in the exam or final exam, we ask you to calculate volume density. You give definition first. What is uh, volume density? Mass per unit cell divided by volume uh, unit cell. Then only you give this formula. Rho equal to Na divided by Na divided by the volume of the unit cell. Then the incoming one will give you example how to calculate this one, how to apply this formula. Okay. This one is a full set of what you learn from the beginning until the formula just now. So we are given one type of element called copper. Copper have FCC, so you know have four sphere. Atomic radius is given, means atomic radius is R is given. So you know the relationship between A and R of each type. In this case, it's FCC. So assume atom to be hard sphere that touch each other along the face diagonal of FCC cell show in this one. Calculate theoretical value of density in megagram per cubic meter. And atomic mass copper is this one. So this one uh, from uh, extract from the periodic table. 
So you know for FCC, A equal to 4R divided by square root of 2. You replace the R value. You get 0 0.3 something nanometer. Then you pull out the volume density equation. Right? So we have 4, and then you go to periodic table, copper, 63.55. Right. So this one you are given atomic mass copper in the in the question is 63.54, but in the periodic table you get 63.55. Okay. Periodic table is uh, experimental data. Huh? As you learned in the very, very early beginning, you calculate AMU, then you get this number. Okay, so how to calculate mass in F FCC? You take 63.55 gram per mole, divide by 6.02, this is number of avocado per mole, times 4. Because you take this one divided by number of avocado, you get one atom, how much? How, how, how many gram per atom? Right, you take the gram divided by number of atom, you get gram per atom. You have four atom, four sphere in FCC. Then you get the mass of one in the uh, of uh, the total sphere inside FCC unit cell. M equal to 42.22, negative 23 gram. Okay, you rearrange, get one number. So volume, you know that volume is A cubed. So you're given the A there. Okay, A is, uh, that's now you calculate. Right. You, re you take this one to here, you substitute, you get A equal to 0 0.3615. You substitute inside there. So volume, you get 4 point something. So theoretical, you take M divided by V, you get 8.933 gram per cm cube. It is how you do it. Okay. All right. The next one is called planar atomic density. The word, uh, the word here, oh, sorry, the keyword here is planar. Planar means it refers to a certain plane. Then you calculate how many atoms can pack on that plane. So the equation is rho P, P here is that plane, that, that paper size, huh? the 2D plane. Equivalent number of atoms whose centers are intersect by the selected area divided by selected area. Rather, I'll give you one example. Now, example. This is how we do from the beginning. If we take BCC plane, BCC is one atom at the center, four atom, four atom, uh, four atom at the top, or four sphere at the bottom. If we take the plane on one one zero, mean one to the x, one to the y, you get one plane there like that. That means you slice in that way. Once you slice. You, you draw this diagram. You slice like that, you'll get one circle at the center, quarter, 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 quarter. Make sense? So you chop the cube by this plane. Okay? So you get a diagram like that. Then we already proved to you the side is A, the bottom one is square root of 2. Because we have a right angle triangular here. A, A. So you get square root of 2A. Okay. Okay. So in this plane, you combine the area. How many circles you can get? A full circle. The answer is 2 
circle of two atoms. So you combine this, this one, this one, this one, this one, you get one atom, and plus another one, you get two. Okay, this one referring to the cutting plane. For example, how to calculate that one? Calculate planar atom density on one one zero plane again, but this time on BCC. So BCC, you chop, you get two atoms. Uh, lattice constant and so. So how do you calculate? Same. You pull out the equation. So equivalent atoms at the center of the plane here is two atoms. So you know that the area, the area of the, this plane is square root 2a multiplied by a. You get square root 2a square. So you take this one divided by this one. All right. So the answer is 1.72 10 power 13 atom per mm cube. This is hmm? maybe. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Again, uh, most of the time, your question or your 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 assessment will be the two simple crystal structure, BCC, FCC. Okay. The numbers make sense to you, right? Make sense to you, right? This one is just, you just cut it and then you draw it. Then you count how many atoms on this plane. Okay. And one more calculation. Linear atomic density. Uh, what does it mean? This one focus on line. Just now on plane, this one on line. So, on the top is number of atom diameter intersect by the selected length of the line in that particular direction divided by selected length of the line. This one is linear and atomic density. It means you draw a line, then you see how many atoms cross by that line. It's like needles. You try to throw a needles and then how many atoms that it can poke, poke through. Right? So this one, linear one, means it's a vector. You draw that vector, and then you count how many atoms inside that vector. For example, now, you know the bracket, right? Bracket means uh, direction. So again, copper again, FCC again. So you are given a direction of 1, 1, 0. Means X move 1, Y move 1, Z remain x1, y1, you get from here to here. Here to here, you have a FCC. FCC at that bottom plane uh, is a face, right? FCC is a face. So each face is half sphere here. Make sense? You chop half mass. Then this one quarter, this one quarter. Okay. Uh, this one is uh, half. This one is consider the half here. This one consider half. This one consider half. So total is two. It's referring to radius uh, because when it come to come to line, uh, line intersect, uh, this is considered half atom already. Because this is R, right? You you go through half of the atom. Half atom, half atom. So you get two. Uh, sorry, you get combined become one. Means the needle go through one one sphere. Go through 
this half, this half, get one, and then the center one, get two. The needle go through two, two atom, punch through two atom. Then density, you know the, the line here is square root 2a, this is a, this is a, so this here to here is square root 2a. Then you'll get, you substitute the numbers, you get uh, 3.9, 10 power 6 atom per mm. Uh, when it comes to assessment, you'll be given very simple uh, vector and plane. Okay. This one you read through. Uh, in material science, one term is called polymorphosis. means you have a, a loss of shape. Poly means many, morphosis means change of shape, right? Or allotropy. So it can change shape, for example, um, you can see, uh, uh, for example, forum. Forum room temperature if it is, is a BCC, but if you raise temperature to 900 something, it changed from BCC to FCC. Then you more than the one three four nine, uh, one three nine four, it changed back to BCC crystal structure. This is called polymorphosis phenomena. Okay. Later in uh, chapter four, we learn about graph and the phrase of that element. It means it changes from liquid solid and mixture of liquid solid. In metals, you have alpha, gamma, and so on. Okay, so this is a reference from the temperature uh, Celsius. This is in, uh, in Celsius. As you can see, it changed from alpha to gamma to delta. Okay. This is an example of Thin, that when you cool it, it changed from beta to alpha. So it changed shape from this one to very complex crystallized shape. This one you refer to the table. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember this, the name of this one, but it changed from, this is called what? FCC or BCC? This one? BCC, eh? BCC to, you refer to table. So, it also explains the change of color of materials, especially metals. For example, tin, if it's in a white, this crystal structure is this color, and if in a, if you do the cooling, you cool it down, it become gray color because of the crystal structure. Okay, the rest you read, huh? And um, some history, uh, some history when the people go to war uh, in the Russian, they, they are, their button, uh, their button uh, made of tin. So during the, the war, they go into extreme cold condition. They notice that the button change color. The button change from silver to gray. This is just a simple mathematics. Uh, you just uh, listen, try to see whether you can absorb or not. Huh? So it tell you to calculate. Now we already done what what you should learn already. It's just the uh, application by changing some of the word in the statement in the question, then see whether you are able to adapt to what the question want you to calculate. So for example, it asks you to calculate theoretical volume change. You know how to calculate volume already. Huh? So this one, it, it asks you to calculate the volume change, means from state one to another state. So for pure matter from SCC to BCC, huh? you already know how to calculate volume for FCC, volume for BCC. Now you apply what you learned previously in this question. Right? Assume 
hard sphere atomic model that is no change in atomic volume before and after the transformation. So the one that you see here is FCC, crystal structure. You know that your A is 4R divided by square root of 2. This is FCC. BCC, you know that your A equal to 4R divided by square root of 3. This one you, you, you know already. So you calculate volume. Okay. So volume of FCC equal to square root this A cube divided by 4 because we have 4 atoms. Then you get this, this number. This one calculate by per atom, volume per atom. The question asks you volume change. Uh, yeah, this one doesn't mention whether in what you need, but this, these slides tell you to calculate in the volume per atom. So BCC, also same. Have two atoms, so you get A cubed divided by 2. You get 6.16 R cubed. So you change from BCC to FCC, you see the number? 5.66 to 6.16. So the change of volume, you take BCC minus FCC divided by FCC because the previous one is FCC. You take this one minus this one, you count the percentage. It will be around 8% changes in volume per atom. Okay. So you get a positive value. It means uh, uh, the volume become bigger. The volume become bigger. Okay, the rest is uh, add-on information, right? Uh, before these slides is all crystalline structure where you can repeat it and you can calculate because it's repeated in a certain pattern. Non-crystalline or we call it a uh, a four, uh, a four, how to read, huh? a morph, a morpheus material is you, you, there is a random structure, random pattern. So you can only qualitatively describe. Huh? Okay, the rest you read, lah. Huh? Um, this one is the X-ray machine that I told you before. Um, the structures and all this. But I don't ask you this all these things, right? You will get something this big when you take out from the machine the result that you expected to get. You get all this big and so on. So actually, there is a way to to calculate the type of materials. But for your case, I don't ask you. Huh? Right. So there's the energy line that we learned from the beginning. Right? The subcell and all this. So when energy change, then you absorb different energy. Then you get different peak from the machine. Okay. Important is this graph. Uh, what is the concept of how, how all the scientists get that element or the, the crystal structure or that particular element. So you see there's a input. They shoot an X-ray. They hit the material. Then they bounce back to the receiver. Okay, so there's an A and B. So A and B means no refract means there's no change of angle that happened inside here. The input and then go back the same angle, right? There's no change. However, when there's a reflected ray, the computer can calculate the angle change in the input and output ray. Then they do calculation. 
by using this diagram, which I'm not going to ask you. Okay, so there's important is that oh, in X-ray, there's an input output, then the computer will generate the data for you. That's more important. Okay, uh, then there's a formula to calculate, of course. Uh, so unless you are doing your research in material, then this is very important. So there's a calculation to calculate the wavelength because you are more in the uh, signal X-ray. So X-ray, when you when you move about X-ray, there's a lambda wavelength frequency and so on. So you can calculate lah. There are formula to calculate. So this is the formula that you need to uh, use. Of course, I won't ask you in your assessment. Um, Okay, so for this module also, our lab do not use uh, SEM machine. So uh, this is for your reference only uh, for this module. Right. So this equation is called Bragg Raw, which is important if you communicate with uh, material scientists. Okay, this one to calculate the type of material. So for example, these are the example of calculating the material okay material you calculate 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 then you get one number of the a a is what we learned before this there's a table give you the a crystal structure length so from the from the x-ray machine or the x-ray machine you can measure what is your a once the A come out, you know what is that material. Okay, because you already people already find out what is the A for that particular uh, material. This is the machine. And there's an in input beam hit the sample, reflect at a certain angle. Because each crystal structure have different uh what do you call different angle of uh, reflection. So you measure the angle by using detector. Advanced one, they have detected. They have a, uh, you can say 180 degree sensor. You have uh, all these sensor here. So when they shoot, then they, they detect what is the angle of that. Then they calculate what is that uh, element. Okay, something like that. Then you, for example, this is the angle. So when they shoot, then they get one peak. Then this is the refraction angle from 20 degree to 160 degree. So this is a round shape. So they when there's a when they detect signal at that particular uh, angle, then there's a peak. The peak will tell you the type of uh, uh, sample because all this peak is the the plane, the the the, the refraction of uh, the late the X-ray signal, right? Because of the atomic packing, you shoot, then it will bounce, right? It's like you're playing snooker, so it will bounce at a certain angle. So all this will give you. You combine all this, you refer to a standard chart. It will tell you, okay, this is for tungsten sample. Okay, there is a reference material for you to check. Okay, this is for iron. So you, you send a sample in, you get this type of a pick, you get 110-200-211 at that particular angle. Then this is alpha iron. It's like standard already, you, you, it's like fingerprint. You take this one, you compare to the standard chart, then okay, this is what material. Okay, there's a specific number the specific angle uh, angle and uh, the reflection uh, plane okay. and this again is you, you keep uh, repeating uh, the same formula okay the same formula and there's a table for all the hkl numbers right so this one is in the encyclopedia of material so you just need to, once you get the signal, this one already programmed inside the advanced computer already. So you don't need to memorize. Okay. 
So again, there are calculations for that. I don't ask you all these things. Again, uh, at least you heard before what is Miller indexes. Miller indexes. And example 14 is, uh, is an example of experiment if you have that machine. Do you have an X-ray uh, machine? Then this is the template they use to, to do. Lah. For example, you go, you, 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 in the experiment, you collect, uh, there's a feedback at 40 degree, 48 degree, and so on. And then you have a wavelength of that. You determine the cubic structure, lattice, and identify the element. So usually this kind of question will come out in a uh, lab session, lab report, uh, or long AC uh, assignment. But for our module, I don't ask you to do all these things. Right. But at least you know there's a way of finding the uh, information. All right. So you calculate the data. Right. So all these are two degree. You do calculation. You divide half. You find the sine. Find the sine square. Plug in the uh, the in the the information the equation. All right. You plug in the equation there. For example. A and B, you compare these two data, you get that one. So uh, then you compare, you get the value of 0 0.5, you compare to a, a chart and give you 0 0.5, right? And so on. Huh? As you read, again, there's a table to refer. Okay, this one maybe come out for your junior. Huh? Your batch, I won't ask. Maybe your junior, okay? Okay, so I skip. Okay, with this, we conclude chapter three. Okay.